understanding what is the basic uh, idea of rock, me rock mechanics and why you are uh, doing it, what is the re reason for uh, rock mechanics and what is the application of rock mechanics in the mining. So let's start. First one, the definition of rock, uh, rock mechanics. So to be honest, there is no such kind of definition, but uh, what we will be discussing is what is rock mechanics and how is rock mechanics related to mining. So we are going to discuss that. So rock mechanics is not, uh, nothing but a field or a subject which is going to deal with the properties of rocks when under load. Whenever a rock is under uh, uh, certain amount of load, how the rock is going to operate or how that uh, rock is going to behave under some uh, load conditions. Uh, for example, there is a shaft pillar. Shaft pillar is going to support the mine sh uh, entry shaft so how that shaft is going to behave under the load so we are going to analyze that so or uh, any underground workings like there are roadways in the underground how they are going to deform how they are going to change whenever you do an extra excavation so that is what we are going to study so this is also in a branch of engineering so this is it is nothing but mechanics only but here we are going to deal in different manner uh, what you call uh, engineering mechanics is different from the rock mechanics in few cases actually uh, it is uh, not going to deal in uh, what you call uh, members like we deal in mechanics it is having a different application altogether how we are going to see that okay so as i told just wait, let me take the pen so it deals with the mechanical behavior of the rocks whenever they are loaded so this is what rock mechanics is a branch of engineering which uh, deals with the behavior of rocks under uh, stress conditions whenever we are applying some load here the load is not applied by us it is actually being applied by the incumbent rocks, the rocks above the uh, pillar or above the member which is placed inside or which is naturally inside. Okay. So scope of the rock mechanics, again I have told, as I told you, rock mechanics deals with the properties of the rock which are going to be helpful for designing the underground workings or open cast workings. Uh, it is not like rock mechanics is limited to only underground or open cast. Rock mechanics will be daily, uh, will be useful in both underground and in surface. Uh, you will be getting it out sir in open cast what is the need of rock mechanics. Uh, in open cast mines you are having uh, benches like this. Okay, these benches are formed once in a lifetime. If these benches are formed then they have to stand for the lifetime of the mine. So the stability of these benches is analyzed by the subject called as rock mechanics. We will be analyzing them, studying them, we will be um, using some methods to control them. So this is how rock mechanics deals with us. And uh, in underground, uh, for example, there is a solid coal and we are driving a roadway in it. Okay, so actually previously the rock uh, the pressure from the surface is in this condition okay after the cavity is made this cavity is made in the underground the rock pressures uh, are going to deviate and uh, come here like this okay they are changing their direction they can't go into the cavity they have to go into the solid coal so they are going to exert a pressure exert their pressure at the corners uh, you can call them as abutment points okay so that load distribution will be studied by rock mechanics and also we will be analyzing how much load is going to distribute and how much width of the roadway which can be driven by us or um, how much height of the gallery we can excavate so these are the things we will understand even we will be studying about the subsidence subsidence is nothing but for example uh, this is a coal block if you start excavating the bottom portion that is the coal and uh, due to the cavity created the surface which is will be sagging inside they will be going going inside so this cavity formed uh, due to the underground excavation is called as subsidence so we will be st studying that subsidence also in this rock mechanics okay so uh, the designing methods are a bit different uh, than the engineering mechanics here we will be using different methods why we are going to do that we will be seeing in the next point the rock and soil are very different uh, from the other engineering materials for example iron beams or uh, uh, aluminium pipes or anything which are being used as supports in uh, your construction or um, the rods which are used in the reinforced concrete are very different uh, from the rocks because 
the uh, iron rods are actually casted into a particular form they are very strong but the rock and soil are having a lot of joints discontinu uh, discontinuities or folds or faults so the rock is not a completely a solid member there are number of joints in it so uh, dealing with these rocks is uh, different from uh, dealing with engineering materials so we need special methods so that is the reason we have designed separate chapter a separate uh, subject called as rock mechanics so this point is going to explain a lot about uh, this uh, rock mechanics for example there is a reinforced concrete structure so whenever an engineer decide uh, designs this first he will take the uh, load uh, probable load acting in that location whenever he is de uh, designing a uh, pillar in a what you call bridge so what he will be taking he will actually he will be actually taking the load probable load acting on that pillar okay then with that load for that load he will be designing the material and design the material and design or designed to the acting load probable acting load but here in the rock mechanics it is very different because here the load is not acting the load is being redistributed the, actually the previously load was uh, vertical these loads were redistributed to this location okay so we can't assume that this is the limit of the load so and the other thing is we are not dealing with the solid iron rods or anything like that we are dealing with the incubant rocks the rocks institute rocks the rocks which are only existing there the pre-existing rocks will be having some joints so these joints are going to reduce the strength of the rock so that is the reason we are going to use different uh, methods for designing so the other thing is uh, the designer will not have much of a choice when designing because the design will be majorly de uh, depending upon the geological conditions of the rock okay so these are the conditions or the uh, uh, what call uh, scope which rock mechanics is uh, brought into the picture so normal mechanics yeah we are going to use the same principles we are not going to change anything but yet we are we have designed a separate subject because the rock is uh, different the rock structures or the soil structures are different when compared to the uh, engineering materials so that is the reason we are dealing with this subject right so first of all uh, before going to the definition of the stress what I want to say is rock mechanics is very much simple but uh, you have to understand it basically then it will be very much easier so we are just going to use the rock mechanics in uh, mining field for designing of the underground and surface workings how they uh, their shape should be how the dimension of the roadway should be what is the height of the bench should be what is the width of the bench should be whenever you are dumping the material in an open cache what should be the height of the dump yard what should be the area of the dump yard so or what is the ground uh, condition what is the stability required so these are the criteria which will be dealt by the rock mechanic subject nothing more than that okay we are not going to uh, go deeper let's start uh, about the de first definition define stress so mathematically there is a definition and uh, there is a definition in other words also first of all let's see the actual definition whenever you are applying a force f on a area or a, there is a rod like structure i will show you the image whenever you are applying a force f so the particular member is going to uh, contract or it will be it will be getting compressed so at the time this surface is going to uh, deform by something so the area on which uh, this force is being applied is uh, going to give the value okay let's see this so this is your member here the green solid uh, cuboid is your member you are applying a load of force f on this particular area a so you can take the upper upper base this is the having an area of a and uh, a force of f is applied on it okay so the stress is defined as a force per unit area the applied load by area of this cross section right so that is the stress okay so this is the mathematical definition so for example there are molecules or atoms or elements in this particular member okay whenever you are applying a force f on this member these molecules are going to exert some uh, react reacting force uh, in the opposite direction so that reaction force is called as stress 
so that stress is indicated by the symbol sigma okay i think you got it so uh, stress is nothing but the reactive force which will be exerted by the materials or the elements of the uh, what you call elements of the member whenever you are applying a force on it so you have applied a force f on this cross section and the molecules or the elements uh, within the member are going to exert a react uh, reaction force so like uh, your newton's third law whenever you uh, uh, apply a force there will be equal and opposite reaction right you are applying a force f on it and there is an uh, uh, opposite reaction force of f so that reaction force is going to be taken in the numerator and the area on which the force is being exerted is taken as the denominator so that is stress is uh, the symbol of the stress is sigma so stress is equal to force divided by the area okay the units of this stress are newton per meter squared how we got it let's see so the force is uh, denoted in newtons okay the unit of force is newton and um, area is in meter square okay so this is the unit of the uh, stress and this uh, newton per meter square is also given as given the name as pascal you can use the name pascal right so what happens uh, let's uh, try to understand this formula a bit more for example i have added 10 more newtons i am applying a force f for that force f i am act, uh, adding a load of 10 more newtons right so then the force of uh, a force acting on the member will be f plus 10 divided by the area so implies whenever you are uh, increasing the load the stress is increasing on the member right so remember this whenever you are increasing a force the stress is going to increase right uh, what i am going to do is uh, just to change the member now the i am increasing the area of cross section so the force is the uh, same constant the force by uh, area i am increasing the area area is increased by 10 meter square now right so whenever i am increasing the area then thus what you call the denominator is value is higher implies the stress is going to reduced so this is how we understand the formula if you increase the force the stress is going to be increasing if you increase the area the stress is going to reduce so this is what you have to remember so stress is nothing but in mathematical terms force per unit area the symbol is sigma the units are newton per meter square it can also be termed as pascal and according to the definition whenever you are applying force f on a particular member the elements of this member are going to exert some reactive force that reacting force is called or resisting force is called as stress so this is what you want to know about stress so simply stress is equal to force f by a you can take it like that so remember sigma is equal to f by a stress is sigma is equal to f by a right next coming to the strain okay let's go to the member first there is a member in the previous uh, slide we have seen the uh, cuboid same cuboid i am taking again i am applying a force f on the same area so this is the area a okay let's assume that the length of the member is l okay so due to the applied load the member is contracting by certain length you have applying this load so this member is imagine this member is having certain properties elastic properties so this member is contracting by length that length is taken as delta l some change it is have, uh, having a some change so the change is measured as delta l so the strain is defined as strain is actually de uh, denoted by epsilon this is the symbol epsilon okay so the greek letter right so strain is change in length by actual length we are not uh, going to take uh, uh, the we are going to take the numerator as change in the length the what uh, the certain mm certain me, uh, centimeter whatever it is so we are going to change take the change in the member in in terms of length here so strain in terms of length is equal to change in length by original length so the denote uh, the symbol for this is epsilon and there are not going to be any units because it is length by length so it's almost like a ratio so there won't be any units here right so is it limited to the length only no the strain is not limited to the length only change in length by original length is going to be giving the strain in terms of length there is change in area by area original area there is change in volume by original volume uh, for example take a rubber band okay take a rubber band and pull it, uh, pull it outward so 
So this, uh, well, I am taking this rubber band in the shape of square. So whenever I pull it, it will be coming into the shape of a rectangle. So the area of this uh, uh, original rubber is being changed here. So how much with uh, with uh, how much it has changed? Uh, that change is taken as change in area delta a by actual area. So that is going to give strain in terms of uh, area. Right. Next, I am uh, going to take a sponge ball. Okay, uh, the sponge ball, the smiley sponge ball you will be seeing in the shops. So I am taking that smiley sponge ball. Okay, I am squeezing it. Okay, I am applying a load on it. So it will be defo deforming in this shape like this, something like this. Okay, it is deformed. So, so the volumetric change is to be measured here. We are not going to take the volume of this member. We are going to take the delta V, the change in the volume, initial volume minus present volume that delta v is to be measured so the change in volume by actual volume is going to give the strain in terms of volume so that is uh, strain with respect to length strain with respect to area strain with re strain with respect to volume volumetric strain okay the, so this is what is called as strain so strain is defined as the deformation that resulted due to the applied force on a member so it is uh, actually measuring the how much deformation it has taken whenever you are applying certain load, right? So simply change in length by uh, original length or change in area by original area or change in volume by original volume. So coming to the next topic, the Poisson's ratio, it will be also termed or Poisson's ratio or Poisson's ratio, whatever it is, depending up your, upon your pronunciation. So Poisson's ratio is... Uh, Mathematical definition I'm telling you Poisson's ratio is a lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain. So let's take the image and then you will be understanding. So this yellow uh, square is a rubber band. Iman imagine this yellow uh, box is a rubber band. So the horizontal line here is a uh, longitudinal direction and the other direction if at all you are taking a cube. Imagine that I am taking a cube here. Let me draw a cube here. After that you will be understanding something. Okay, so I am pulling this cube in this direction. So this pulling direction, this red color arrows is the longitudinal direction. The other two directions, that upward and bottom and the z-axis direction. These two directions are termed as lateral. Whenever you are pulling in the horizontal directions, the other two di dimensions of the cube are termed as lateral. Okay, so don't make it complex. Uh, let's take a rubber band, simple rubber band. So the rubber band, this yellow color rubber band is in a uh, rectangle form. Now what I am doing is, I am putting, uh, I am pulling this rubber band equal with equal amount of force on both sides, uh, like a tensile force. So I am pulling it outward. So what happens? Obviously, the this length, this width will be reducing and the area will be, so length will be increasing. This width will be reduced and this length will be increased. So imagine that the member has uh, formed into this, okay. The yellow color rubber band is changed into this violet color one whenever when I have applied a load. Remember, if I release this load, this green color load, if the lateral load, longitudinal load is removed, then this member will be coming into this condition again. So the Poisson's ratio will be working in the elastic limit of the member. So the Poisson's ratio will be working within the elastic limit of the member. We are not going to talk about the plastic uh, plastic area means the deformation will be permanent. We are not going to talk about that. We are going to discuss about the member within the elastic limit. Implies whenever I remove the force, simply I am pulling this rubber band. If at all I release this, if the force is removed, this uh, rubber band will be coming into its normal condition. So that is the conditions in which we are going to work, right? Okay. So whenever I am applying the load, this width is going to be reduced into, into this new width and the length is going to expand like this. So you can see the difference. The length is higher, the violet uh, length is higher compared to this and this width is also reduced. So what is going to be happening, how we are going to uh, calculate is lateral stress lateral uh, what call lateral strain so this is the strain implies the change in length by original length okay change in length by original length okay that is in the lateral direction in this direction okay it is uh, for example if you take this as uh, d this actually is d and this is delta d okay 
this will be the negative of delta d by actual d or actual d this is the lateral strain and what is the longitudinal strain for example i am taking the length of the rubber band as l and this as uh, the change the newly formed as a uh, sudden value so the change in length is delta l the extra portion which is elongated is the delta l okay so delta l by l so this is going to give the strain so i am going to explain you why there is a negative symbol here keep this aside but there there is uh, you are going to do a mistake here what is that is you have to take the change in length so this is d this width is d and this is uh, some d1 whatever it is so how you will be getting the delta d delta d will be initial length uh, initial length minus final length you are you have to take the difference between them so not the newly formed length you have to take the change in the length okay so that is what we have to take so about this negative symbol in the lateral direction the width is actually reducing the width is actually reducing so that is the reason uh, we are going to get a negative symbol so to cancel out that we are going to take uh, a negative symbol at the numerator so that is the reason and in the longitudinal direction it is already uh, due to the tensile force it is a positive force so it the length is increasing so that is the reason we are not taking any negative symbol there so this is the poisson's ratio it is uh, indicated by the symbol nu and it is pronounced as uh, pronounced as nu and this is the symbol it's almost like a v okay remember this poisson's ratio is applicable in the elastic limit and it's applicable in the iso for the isometric materials this is the conditions isometric materials is the material which is having uh, same properties in all the directions the elongation is uh, almost all like a constant thing okay so we are going to apply this position ratio in the conditions only okay what it is going to give what is the uh, what called good we are going to do by re reading this position ratio it is giving an idea about how the member or how the rock is going to deform under the applied load so that is what we are going to get by studying this okay so the position ratio range is from minus 1 take a line like this this is uh, somewhere near minus 1 and uh, somewhere here is 0 and here it is 0 0.5 most of the materials will be having the position ratio between 0 to uh, 0 0.5 and most of the metals will be having a position ratio around 0 0.3 okay and the negative members the negative poison ratio will be not have uh, these materials or uh, not uh, existing materials not naturally occurring members members or materials these are actually the engineered materials so it is nothing but uh, let's understand what's what is the poison ratio minus 1 0 or 0 0.5 uh, for example the poison ratio is 0 0.5 okay or positive poison ratio or plus poison ratio what does indicate means uh, if you are taking a rubber band and uh, you are elongating it so if you are elongating it it will be naturally uh, the length will be increasing and uh, the area the width of this member will be reducing let me take the other figure the poison ratio is positive okay implies you are taking a rubber band and you have elongated it and it will be stretching like this see the length has increased comparatively and the width has reduced so this is positive poisons ratio right the poisons ratio is equal to zero implies whenever you are pulling this rubber band it is going to uh, it's a uh, what you call um, length and breadth both are not going to change it are they are going to expand equally okay if you pull it outward the length will be increasing simultaneously the ray, uh, what you call width will be also increasing comparatively there won't be any uh, difference so the poisson ratio will be zero okay lateral uh, strain uh, stress by uh, lateral strain by longitudinal strain so both the uh, strains in both directions are equal so there won't be any change in the member th in the poisson ratio now there are members engineered members or engineered materials who are having a poisson ratio of negative member negative in the uh, Poison ratio those members are actually very different whenever you are trying to pull it outward they are going to actually expand in this direction 
okay in the lateral directions only they are going to increase and uh, so that is the reason you are they are going to give the negative poisons ratio right so for the zero poisons ratio there is a cork like thing whenever you are uh, you will be inserting some bottle corks uh, i will try to show some example in the later class uh, you will be using a cork to block the mouth of the uh, uh, bottle water bottle or any liquor bottles you will be using the cork to block this block its mouth so that cork is actually having a zero poisons ratio or almost or close to zero poisons ratio okay so that is what uh, the range of poisons ratio means minus 1 to 0 0.5 that are, those are the theoretical values possible most materials will be having a poison ratio between 0 to 0 0.5 and most metals will be having a poison ratio near 0 0.3 so i think you have understood about this so let's go to the engs modulus so the engs modulus uh, is the other thing which are uh, which is uh, very much important there are three kind of moduli which are very much important this is the primary one it is indicated by e symbol e it is indicated by the symbol e so it is nothing but stress by strain mathematically within the elastic limit we will be seeing uh, the figure don't worry about that within the elastic limit the ratio of stress to the strain is called as Engl, uh, what you call Engs modulus. So the Engs modulus symbol is E, and uh, the sigma is the stress, and the epsilon is the strain. So whenever you are act, uh, putting up a tensile load on a member, tensile is nothing but pulling outward. Previously, I have shown you the example. So this is something like a tensile load. So you are pulling the member outward. Okay. So let's see the figure. There you can understand better, right? So this is the member here. This is the member I am putting uh, the, between the two jaws and I am trying it to pull out. I am trying to pull this member in the outward direction. So it has actually previously it will be before in the start of experiment it will be joining completely. After pulling it will be detaching. So this region is called as elastic region up from here to here. This is elastic region and this is called as plastic region. What is elastic region and plastic region? Elastic region implies within this limit, within this, uh, uh, within this stress and strain of uh, from here to here. Imagine this is the region. Within the this stress and strain, whenever you are applying load in this region or if the stress is within this limit, the member is going to be restored to the previous condition. Whenever you are starting the experiment, the member is having certain area A or uh, a length L. Within this elastic limit, if the load is within the elastic limit and if you release the load, the member will be coming to the original condition. But after this point, uh, the member will be having plastic deformation. Implies the deformation will not be changing. The de deformation is permanent. Okay, that is the plastic region. And the X point you are seeing it here is uh, whenever there is a breakage after due to the load applied, the member will be breaking into two pieces right that point is where the experiment ends okay that is the breaking point okay right so what does this straight line means okay so this is the for most of the materials this is a straight line okay so with this straight line what we'll be taking this the slope of this straight line is actually your Engs modulus if you measure the slope of this member that will be your Engs modulus e okay right so as I told, it is one of the three elastic constant. Okay, yeah. So the units of the Engs modulus is same as the stress that is Newton per meter square or Pascals. Remember, I have told that strain is not going to have any units, so that is stress by strain. So stress is having a unit of Newton per meter square or Pascal, and the strain is not having any units, so the unit of the Engs modulus will be same as a stra uh, stress that is Newton per meter square or pascal right so Engs modulus can be measured by the slope i have already mentioned it so this is how we are going to take the Engs modulus so the slope of this member this straight line is going to give the Engs modulus so Engs modulus of various materials okay titanium carbide is having higher amount of Engs modulus 
next coming to the carbon steel next coming to aluminium and uh, this polythene like thing is going to have a lesser uh, what do you call Young's uh, modulus okay so this is the graph which will be obtained when you do the tensile test in your mechanics lab so the rock tensile test is going to be done in very different manner not like a metal tensile test you will be using a Brazilian method 